Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University, Learning with the Brain and Mind, Brain-Based Learning, Timing, Error Correction, Emotional States. <clears throat> this is the last in our three-part series. Using the book, Teaching with the Brain and Mind by Eric Jensen, highly recommended. Seven critical factors. This video looks at timing, error correction, and emotional states. The first part, timing. Know that sleep, hormones, and other things will affect learning. So expect students to vary in their performance at different times of the day, just like we do. We cannot expect ourselves to get at peak performance and hold that for six to eight hours. Most of us, especially when we get older, we have peak performance and we need a nap time, peak performance, and nap or downtime. <clears throat> to, so to counteract some of this, include physical movement. Get students standing, stretching, walking, marching, doing something. And utilize block scheduling where you're able to immerse yourself in a concept, subject, or idea for longer blocks of time with activity breaks. <clears throat> the second part is error correction. Trial and error learning is how the brain learns best. We rarely get things right the first time. We do not replicate reality in our head. We have to mess it around, trial and error. So making mistakes is the key to developing intelligence. Learning should involve more exploration of ideas, not replicating information. We need more time simply messing around. Trial and error learning activities create more emotional or activate more emotional uh, structures within the brain. So more group discussions, case studies, game simulations, <clears throat> writing assignments with peer and teacher feedback, that's that error correction, student rubrics where they create the rubrics and they check their own assignment, high feedback activities and assignments. And this doesn't always have to be teacher feedback, it can be peer feedback as well. More immediate feedback and activities with, uh, with more immediate feedback with activities and assignments. You create these neural connections. They're made more efficient by feedback-driven learning. Learning isn't a one-way street. The brain is designed to learn from mistakes. So we need to give students chances to make mistakes or errors or mess around. I don't like mistakes. I guess an error is a better term. So activities where students can test hypothesis and make these errors, where they can make mistakes and get immediate feedback, and feedback that allows students to evaluate, reflect, and change. Messing about, trial and error, is the way the brain naturally works. So types of feedback activities, model building, peer editing, pair share, turn to a neighbor, student presentation with audience feedback. Tell the student two things they did well and two things to work on competitive games, video or audio taping, self doing something. Authors chair or fishbowl activities where small groups perform and class watches and checklists or rubrics to evaluate products and performance as students are creating and as evaluative feedback. So air correction is a form of active learning, active learning. Motion requires that we bring more neural resources to the movement and to the learning. Humans are designed to recall better if we are actively engaged versus passively receiving something. So error correction is a form of active learning. And the last part, emotional states, and I'll just touch on this, but emotions are one of the greatest regulators of learning and memory. More intense emotional states means we are more likely to remember. Emotions influence how and what we perceive and remember. Our, based on our emotional state, we perceive certain things, we re encode certain things, and we revise and reconstruct and remember. Remember means to remember again. So, some suggestions. Minimize risk by pair share small group speeches. Activities that create excitement, such as science fair, debates, tea talks, etc. Emotional states create a positive emotional state to enhance learning. Seven critical factors in the learning process, brain-based learning, engagement, repetition, input quality, coherence, timing, error correction, and emotional states.